Hello and welcome to another painting guide for the Balance Tomb Diorama. At the end of the last video I gave you the option on which Hobbit to paint next between Merry and Pippin, and reactions were overwhelmingly in favour of everyone's favourite, Fool of a Took. So we're going to paint him up next and rid us of his stupidity. So get yourself some second breakfast, elevensies, luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, supper, and get ready to enjoy the video. If you do, feel free to throw a like and comment my way, I'd really appreciate it. We're starting Pippin off in the same way I start off all my minis, with a primer of army painter matte black, followed by an all over layer of Vallejo black to cover any parts the primer might have missed, and because Vallejo black looks better on camera. After the black paint has dried, it's time to tackle the first part of Pippin! And we'll start with the largest part available, that being the cloak. Pippin's cloak is a kind of maroon color, which isn't something I paint every day, so I had to dive deep into my paint range to come up with an appropriate color. I ended up going with Saddle Brown by Vallejo as the main color, mixed evenly with black as I want to start off dark and work up toward the brightness. I was actually very pleased with the finished product of the cloak, so I think Saddle Brown was a good choice. As always, if you don't use the paint brands that I use, there's a link to a paint conversion chart in the description that has most brands listed. I gave the cloak a total of 5 layers, going brighter with each one, with the first few layers adding more subtle brown to the previously made mixture until I eventually did a layer of pure subtle brown where I start focusing more on the upper parts of the cloak rather than the whole thing, which is then followed by a final layer of subtle brown mixed evenly with white, which is even more focused on the higher parts. This creates the illusion of a light source from above. I essentially paint all my minis with an imaginary light source coming from above both in front and behind the mini. This isn't necessarily super realistic, going by normal standards there would be a single light source, but that would leave most of your mini in shadow and that just doesn't look very good unless you're going for a very specific object source light situation. For this reason I paint both the front and back with their own imaginary light sources. To finish off the cloak I do a bit of black lining to increase contrast and also to clean up any parts of the mini I might have accidentally touched. Now that the cloak is done, we will move on to Pippin's pants, starting off with a layer of dryad bark. We follow this up with a layer of dryad bark mixed evenly with flat earth by Vallejo. And a final layer of one part dryad bark to two parts flat earth is then painted on to finish the pants. Next up is Peregrine's shirt, which I start off with a layer of steel degen drab. I usually paint most things that are supposed to end up white or off-white with something like steel legion drab first, as it covers the area very well and it's easier to paint the color like white over a brighter color than black. It also has the benefit of leaving a darker color behind in the shadows, so it works well for highlighting. Speaking of highlighting, after this initial layer of steel legion drab, we cover the shirt in Wraithbone. Definitely make sure to repaint with black some of the areas you will inevitably cover here, such as the scarf or maybe even the jacket. The shirt is very difficult to access here, but that's also the reason we paint it before all the other things on top of it. Having said that, let's move on to the scarf. For the scarf, we're going to take out one of our favorite paints from the Boromir video, French Mirage Blue. I never thought this paint would see this much use in such a short time, but Pippin's scarf really calls for a light blue, almost minty color, and French Mirage Blue made for a perfect base. After this we cover most of the scarf in pale blue, an even brighter and even mintier color. To finish off the scarf we go back to French Mirage Blue, which we use to paint on some lines and dots on Pippin's scarf as it isn't just a solid color. On to the next part of our fool of a took. Bright blue his jacket is. This time it actually kind of works. We're bringing black back into the mix, three parts of black to be exact, to one part flat blue. I think blue is actually the color, besides brown and gray, I have the most different paints of. I have at least six citadel blues and a ridiculous 15 Vallejo blues. 
I now realize that buying all of them was complete overkill now that I'm more familiar with mixing my own colors. But back when I was less experienced, I thought it would be handy to have many different types of the same color. Having said that, it's certainly useful to have at least a couple, because some paints are very saturated, others are desaturated, some are vibrant, while others are flat. This is relevant because this is exactly why I often use colors like flat blue, due to the flat nature of most of Middle Earth's colors. Whereas if I was painting something like Warhammer, I would sooner pick up some of my more vibrant colors. Anyway, back to the blue jacket. I continue layering whilst going brighter each time, mixing in more flat blue to the existing mixture, until eventually I do a layer of pure flat blue. I also, as with every part of the model, do some black lining. But with the jacket I thought it extra important to mention, as the extra contrast really makes it stand out. Next up are the satchel, scabbard and their accompanying straps and belts, for which we'll pull out a brown I haven't used on the channel yet, Fondia Brown by Citadel. After a layer of pure fondia brown to cover the entirety of the satchel and scabbard, we add some XV88 in the mix for our first highlight on these pieces. And to finish these off, a layer of pure XV88. Now it's time for the buttons and cords, of which there's only really two. A little piece of string on the satchel, as well as the clasp holding the cloak around Pippin's neck. I'll paint these the same way as I painted the buttons and cords for the other members of the Fellowship so far, to keep a tiny bit of uniformity throughout the diorama. This means a layer of Steel Legion drop followed by a layer of Karak stone, and that's it. Up next is the skin, which I paint the same way as I have all other members of the Fellowship, using flat brown and flat earth mixed with more and more white as the brightness increases. I think this is also the appropriate time to address the mangled feet. As you will have noticed by now, before painting my models I drill a hole in the bottom of the lowest part of them so I can impale them with a rod. This is because I'm a massive sadist, I, I mean this is so I don't have to attach them to a base first making both the painting of the model as well as basing easier for myself. It also means I can then drill a hole in the base through which the rod goes and it gives a much stronger bond than only gluing the model directly to the base. Having said all this, it turns out hobbit feet are quite small, so I basically have to drill absolutely perfectly with 100% precision or I might accidentally drill off their feet. So I may have uh, partially drilled off one foot then switch to the other and completely drilled that one off as well. Leaving Pippin with somewhat mangled feet after trying to put very, very, very tiny pieces back together with glue and tiny bits. I think after I finished him and put him on his base I wasn't too bothered by it anymore as it's not super noticeable unless you really look for it, but still, I figured it would be good to address it and I have two more hobbits to go, so I might have to adjust my methods for them slightly. We'll see. Anyway, let's move on to something else. Pippin's hair. Seven of the nine members of the Fellowship have brown hair, but all with slightly different brightness, so I have been trying to paint them all slightly differently to account for that. Pippin is somewhere in the center of the different levels of brightness, so we've started him off with a layer of pure dryad bark. This is then followed by a layer of dryad bark mixed evenly with burnt umber. Next, a layer of pure burnt umber is applied. And finally, a layer of burnt umber mixed evenly with Steel Legion Drab, as always focusing mostly on the uppermost highlights with the final layer. It's time for the medals, which for Pippin mean only his sword and a tiny part on the end of the scabbard. I will once again mention that I will make a full non-metallic metal guide at some point in the future when I feel more confident in my abilities, so in this video I'll only show you the process in a simplified manner. All the paints I use for this are up on screen, and the idea is to paint layer upon layer from dark to light, leaving a large contrast on the metal. I should also mention I mix between each paint and the next one as well, so for example when going from black grey to neutral grey, I first do a layer mixing the two evenly. This results in a very clean blending method where you shouldn't see any transitions between each layer, 
But again, I will go into detail on this at some point in the future in a video specifically on this subject. With that, we have finished Pippin's paint job. The only thing that's left to do now is cover him in some varnish. For this, I use Ultra Matte Varnish by AK Interactive, which, as the tin says, is Ultra Matte, which is the way I want my models to look. After the first coat is dry, I brush on another coat for extra protection. After the varnish is dried, we put Pippin on his Balanced Tomb inspired base and call him done. That's gonna do it for our favorite fool of a took. Speaking of that famous sentence, I figured it would only be fair to paint up the one who said it next, that of course being Gandalf the Grey. So no choice on who to paint next this time, but I do have a poll going on the community tab of my channel on whom to paint after that, so please head over there if you haven't already and let me know who you want to see painted up after the wizard. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have, please let me know by leaving a like or writing a comment, I really enjoy reading them. Also subscribe if you haven't yet to be notified when the next video goes live. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.